What's going on? It's KC from kcdashsounds.com. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to mix vocals. So if you want your vocals to go from sounding like this. To this. Watch this video so I can show you the processing that I use to get the vocals to that point. So before I jump into this video, I just want to quickly say that I get the opportunity to work with so many artists on creating their music or mix and mastering their music and yeah I just it's a, it's a humbling experience and it's um i'm grateful most of the time i'm mixing r&b or rap and then the, on the other occasion i get sent something like this to to mix which is cool do you know what i'm saying because i like if i vibe with it then i'll mix it do you know what i'm saying because i think once you if you like what you're mixing or what you're working with then it, that kind of shows through so if you're not feeling it then i would say don't do it do you know what i mean if you're gonna do it with passion don't do it all Anyway, let's jump into this video and I'll show you what processing I've done to get the vocals to this point. We've got our main vocal, I'm just going to loop it around the verse section. I've got a few processes going on, quite a few processing going on. So what, when I get a mix, what I like to do is chuck it in to a new session, have a quick listen to it, see what's going on, see what I feel like needs changing or needs some kind of processing. And then I'll probably like listen to the vocal, vocals in solo. If you've watched my uh, mixing vocals or my mixing series in the playlist, you'll see that subtractive EQ or corrective EQ is something that I, I like to do straight away. So we listen to this vocal in solo and we take off all the plugins. A lot of processing going on in that case. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. So they're quite dull, dull sounding, and let's hit with this song. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. And then this is what it sounds like with all the plugins. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a Okay, so so first of all, I like to use the NS1 because the NS1, it's just a gate really, do you know what I mean? I've got it in 6.7, so that's just tidying up some of the, the low end rumble. Let me just grab these headphones. So I've got the, first of all, I've got the NS1 that I like to use to uh, clean up some of the low end of the vocals that might have a bit of rumble or whatnot. Bit of, bit of noise. Into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. Yeah, so it's just acting like a gate. And then we got. So I'm using the, the Neve, UAD Neve, using the preamp, and I've pushed it a bit and then turned it down by the output. And then I've used the EQ as well, add a bit of brightness, a little bump, that's at like 3.2 kilohertz. And at 200 hertz, just a 220 hertz, just to add a bit more body in the vocals, um, and that's pretty much it for the Neve. Then moving on to the Pro Q2, because normally what I like to do is like, like I said earlier, I like to use subtractive EQ. So I'm not sure why I've done it that way. And I think what I've done this time is that because I used the Neve as a preamp sort of thing, just to boost a bit of the distortion, a bit of saturation. I've um, I've, I've just boosted some EQ, I've just used the EQ afterwards, like an afterthought, I think. So that's why this, the subtractive EQ is on there afterwards. This looks a bit crazy. Um, some people might think, no, like, why have you got so much EQ boosts and cuts and blah, blah, going on? But like I said, whatever you need to do to get to the point of what you're trying to hear, then just do that. So you can see I've got loads of, loads of cuts in here on the Pro Q2 and I felt like there's just too much going on in these frequencies so cut them up. I miss looking into your eyes I blinked at them at least a million times I miss looking into your eyes I blinked at them at least a million so, Yeah so you can, you can hear how clear it sounds it doesn't sound as muffled and um, yeah, I'm happy with that. So we must move on. We've got the compressors. Compressors. We've got two compressors. Uh, 
Yeah, I seen a trick the other day with these compressors and I thought, let me try that because I'm always looking for new ways to do things, to do, um, to mix my vocals or to mix beats, songs, whatever. So this one um, is a cool, it's a cool way of doing things. I like it. So the first compressor, got a soft distortion on there and we just drop the gain a little bit. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. So they've got some little bit of compression going on there, like four, four or five dBs, which is cool. Level matched. Then we've got jumping onto the second compressor, which is the vintage Opto. And then it's doing the same amount. I'm looking into your eyes. I blinked so we've got like a slower attack on that one, slower release, just to smoothen, smoothen, just to smooth out the, the vocals a, a touch. And uh, yeah, 3.1 ratio on that. Slight boost in the gain, 1.5 dB is not much at all. I miss looking into your eyes. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. I miss looking into your eyes. I just feel, feel like it gives it a bit of character as well. Do you know what I mean? And then, so let's move on. We've got the. L2. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. Catching any peaks that might still be getting through, so what the compressor ain't dealing with, we've got the uh, the limiter just to catch the, the loose ones. So there ain't just one compressor trying to do everything, do you know what I'm saying? Because if that was the case, then there would probably be a lot more, a lot more gain reduction, and then it would sound a bit over processed, and that's, I didn't really want to go for that with this. So then after that we've got the decapitator, boosting the driver touch, got it on E, forget what E is, if you know what it is drop a comment below let me know what the E is, because I know they're all emulations of outboard gear, so if you know yeah let me drop a comment. And I boosted the, the tone of touch, so when we introduce that this is what it sounds like. I miss looking into your eyes, I blinked at them at least a million times so yeah it's giving a bit more on the top end and sounded quite bright compared to how it was without obviously it might sound a bit too much because you're having it in solo and you don't really want to mix in solo just like every now and again be switching in and out of solo just to make sure that everything sounds good together so moving on we've got the pro q2 again and it looks like I'm doing some more more subtractive EQing, probably because I felt I was doing too much on that EQ. But it all works, it all sounds good to me. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a... Yeah, so that's just some more cleaning on that Pro-Q2. Dipped out some of the top frequencies, 10 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz. I felt it was a bit too shrill after probably the decapitator was put on there. And then, to tame some of them sibilant sounds, all the S's and that. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. So about 4 or 5 dB gain reduction on that. Lovely. And then I've got the, uh, the DRX6 D clip because... There was a, there's a part in it, or there's a few parts in the actual recordings where it's got a click sound on it. And I couldn't go in and just like surgically remove it like with cuts and that because it just it didn't sound right and it made it feel choppy, it made it feel too choppy. So I just dropped the, the D click in there and it just took care of that. I miss looking into your eyes. There's no clip parts in that, so there's no point in showing you. But that was my vocal chain for that particular point in the song so then I like to use buses so I've got the Sheps and I'm just using the Sheps for some saturation bit of drive there 
preamps and so the signals running from all through all these plugins up into the ships then we've got boost uh, between about 180 and 164 to 1.4 kilohertz and um, boosting that and then I miss looking into your eyes I've blinked at them at least a million times so even though we're boosting it we're still pushing it down if it gets too out of hand and and then this is again is acting like a DSR I miss looking into your eyes just dealing with some of them unknown frequencies so jumping into the next one we've got the the main Vox Pro, Pro Q2 again like my go to that is and I'm just dipping out a few more frequencies again not too much most is uh, dB, dB and a half. And then I decided that I wanted to add a bit more body. I wanted a bit more top end on the vocals and I was gonna go for two dBs using this API. But then instead I just chose to boost some of the low end at 100 dBs, 100 dBs, 100 hertz at two dBs. And uh, this is what it sounds like. I miss looking into your eyes. I've blinked at them at least a million times. So I just feel it gives it a little bit more body, a little bit more low end, just to make it sit or just blend nicely with the rest of the song. And then the SPL tr Transient Designer. I, just, I like to use that because it's just to tighten up the vocals a bit. It's like a compressor sort of thing. A compressor can make your transient, transients dull, dull them down, or they can make them sharp, so you get to choose or manipulate the, the transients. So for this one, the attack has been boosted and the sustain has been lessened, so it just makes the vocal feel tighter. So let's just hear that all together. I miss looking into your eyes, I blinked at them at least a so that's all well and good, but sounding dry. But I ain't finished yet though. <laughs> Still got a bit more processing going on. But the last thing is my main app. So I have the vocal signal, then I have it going to a bus. And then I have that all vocals going to the main bus. So yeah, it can, sound, it can be a bit complicated, but it's just my workflow and it's how I like to do things. Um, <clears throat> So that last last bus is the uh, Allvox, and that's running through a stressor. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. Hardly doing anything more for, more sound than anything. A bit of grip, and then got the UAD oxide tape at the end of the chain, at the end of the vocal chain, and I've just boosted probably about a dB or two dBs. Um can't remember if I've changed the EQ on this, but it's not a big deal. You just have to see what set we'll see what sounds best for you. So I'm just gonna leave that at the bottom and yeah, that's my vocal chain for that. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a So that's sounding crispy. For me it's sounding nice. Do you know what I mean nice and up front. And you can hear what she's saying. Don't shake muffled. She's good. This is what we want. So, like I said, it was sounding really dry. So the next thing for me is I like to have a bit of a widener. I like to widen the vocals a touch. So on this occasion, I've used a doubler in the ensemble. Normally I use um, the doubler from Waves, but I didn't this time. He cued some of the, the low end before it went to the doubler. And then we've got Fat Effects. Oh, this is my go-to at the moment. One of my favourite plugins at the moment. Logic Stock as well. Can you hear how gassed I am over it? <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so we've got this little section here, yeah. And I've got the tube, got the soft saturation and exciter on it. And that's run into a bus, yeah. So I can just put as much or as little signal I want to it. So I'm just going to boost up the signal so you can hear what it's doing and then pull it back.
miss looking into your eyes. I blink. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, yeah, but there was a double going on. So every time I boosted it, it was doubling. So if you've got that issue, this is what you do go to preferences, audio. This little box is going to come up. Then you go to plugin latency. And you just go through these ones to see what works for you. Bear in mind when you're mixing, we're using a whole heap of plugins, you want to change your buffer size as well. So that might be an issue for you. So just work with those and see what, what works best for your for your session. So I'm just gonna leave that one on. I'm just gonna leave that on all for now. So like I was saying before, before it logic start started to act funny, let's just boost up this um Drums power, why have I called it drums power? It's a, it's a vox, vocal power, parallel. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. A million times. So, yeah, for me, it's adding a little something, something, little saying, saying. I'm happy with that. Moving on to delay. So, on this delay, I've used it as a slapback, have I? Oh no, sorry, I'm lying. I've used it as saturation. So I made some saturation there, and you can hear what's going on. I'll boost it, and then pull it back so you can hear what's going on. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. A million times. That's why I thought God made you to be all mine I miss the looks we gave each other Yeah, I think that helps, definitely helps We'll solo it as well so you can hear I miss looking into your eyes I blinked at them at least a million times I'm mm, There's a bit of noise and stuff going on in that vocal it wasn't edited Times. Just little things like that, just to tie up your vocals, make make sure it's sounding cool. You don't want it to be on the. You don't want it to be. You don't want them little bits and pieces going on because it just tightens it up and makes it sound more professional. So let's take it out a solo. The next plugin we've or the next sends we've got is stereo delay. And that's just a quick slap back. Yeah, that just gives it a sense of space without having to use reverb. And then we've got crystallizer. So for the crystallizer, I had some weird delays going on in there, but I turned it right down because the uh, artist wasn't really feeling it. I think they heard it and it was like, what's going on in the background? But I'll boost it so you can hear it. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. I'm but obviously I didn't have it that loud. Um, as you can see, it's on like 42, minus 42. <laughs> but I just have it there for like texture. Do you know what I mean? And then so, yeah, I thought that worked really well. Then moving on, we got the reverb, like a bit of reverb, just to give it more sense of space. I miss looking into your eyes. I blinked at them at least a million times. A million times. That's why I thought God made you to be on my. I boosted it so you can hear what's happening. Did I? A beat it so you can I'm sure you must have felt it disappear and that's that's what I was going for. I didn't want I wanted it to be heard but not that obviously heard, do you know what I mean? So with the uh with that in mind, there's a bit of EQ going in EQ in going on with this reverb. And I've used a PSP two double four five on that one and all this here, the pre delay, the timing of the decay is all been calculated. And that's something I'm going to show you in another video. Nice, quick, easy way to do it so that the 
reverb fits within your mix. The last um, send that we used on this is a Lex plate and the same as with the, the other reverb we've got that timed to the tempo of the of the song. I'm um, just going to play it with and without. I miss looking into your eyes I blinked at them at least a million times A million times well, Yeah that's it I don't think I used the compressor on this one. Normally I like to use the compressor to, to dip the reverb. So I chained the reverb to the vocals. But I didn't do that on that one for some reason. So yeah. That's how I mixed the vocals for that song. I hope you got something from that video. If you have, make sure you hit that like. Hit the subscribe and the notification bell. You know I appreciate that. Um, if there's any questions that you've got or you've got some tips that you want to share with me. Drop them in a comment, I appreciate all that. Hit me up on Instagram, I'm always dropping hints and tips and tricks that I don't always put on YouTube. And just behind the scenes of me in the studio, working with artists or just working on beats and stuff. Yeah, I appreciate your time. As per usual, thank you for watching. Music is life. Peace.